feeling really resistant. Good. Me too. <laughs> to this, and I'm just curious about. Okay, so it. let's talk about it. Uh, but let's talk about it in this way. Yeah. So can what time is it? Yeah, if we need to start. So can can you interrupt for a second and talk about? Let's talk about that question. Um, what it's been like using the guide, and just talk about it for yourself as a writer, as a student kind of writer. What was it like for you? Can we start that way? And you're saying it's resistant. You're resistant to it. Yeah, like and we'll get back to it. Yeah, good. If that's all right. Um, Say so your name again if you don't mind. My name is Carrie Deal, and again, I teach, at, I teach um, grades 9 and 10 at Maryville High School in Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, this is my first NWP. Yay. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> um, the piece that I chose really resonates with oh, the like, community. I like that you're doing that too. Go the ahead. community yeah. that I teach in because we have this anti-snitch community in Maryville, and we have a we have a high number. Uh, we're a Title One school, so low income area. Uh, our kids are predominantly Hispanic um, Spanish speakers as their first language, and there is this anti-call-the-report-crime mentality because uh, maybe you've heard of this guy, Sheriff Joe, from Arizona. Um, and, and so we have a lot of undocumented people in the Maryvale community who are afraid to report crime for fear of being deported. And so this is precisely why I chose this piece because my kids and I have read some articles about that, and I had a guest speaker come in a few weeks ago um, who is very involved with the Center for Better Neighborhoods. Um, so I'm like, oh my gosh, I have all these ideas. I'm just going to start asking this kid all these questions and, 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 and direct this student to the Center for Better Neighborhoods because maybe that will help him or her, hopefully. Okay. Go ahead. Do you want to? So we. I, we we want to do both things. So let's keep going a little bit that way. We will get hopefully. So what else did you find there? And but let's also talk about the process of using the guides and how that felt to you. Okay. Yeah. Go but ahead. start with what you found there. Yeah. So I I too chose a a piece that resonated with me personally, and it happens to be about the use of video games and the positive and negative effects of video games. And I chose this piece because I have two teenage sons that I think overuse video games. <laughs> and and the, the author of this piece says that he or she is aware that parents are confused and worried <laughs> that they, they, their children are using video games too much. And I appreciate the scaffold provided here because I wanted to go on and on about why I connect with this student and this piece without getting to the point of giving the feedback that they're hoping for as well. So I think that the scaffold helps me to stay focused on what the reader needs, but it also is loose enough that I can connect with the reader or the writer and why the piece connects to me. Does that make sense? Totally. Yeah. Well, and and I also discovered something about myself thanks to this author, whoever it is. Tommy, that's Tommy right there. Okay. We would so, love to have you respond to him. So Tommy. listen to this. Um, so I said that I have two boys. Bobby is 17 and Benjamin is 14, and they seem to play video games nonstop. And I have not helped the issue because I'm the one that has purchased the games, the computer, the television, the game system. <laughs> and I can see how I, that my actions confuse them. Why would I provide these resources for them and then tell them not to use it? So there may be a piece you got a there, <laughs> we all I do. know, <laughs> about why do we provide these things for our students or our children and then ask them not to use it. Well, can we get back to her point though? Yes. About the Do you want to make to the you want to, and then we'll we'll let you talk. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Lacey. It, and I'd really like to address that as well as include your comment. Um, so I'm thinking about um, some things that we really shy away from, formulaic writing, and 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 that. But I also pair that with. Um, text structures, and I'm thinking Gretchen Bernabe, and we are using a lot of her text structures in um, some of the schools that we're in right now that have high ELL um, percentages, and I'm thinking about how using this as um, 
a guide or scaffolding or as a text structure would be extremely helpful um, for those ELL students that are trying to learn um, this particular type of response as far as general discussion response, um, agree, disagree response. And I agree with you in that it gives a lot of opportunity to include um, your own thoughts and to, um, to build on this. So um, I, I really appreciate it and will definitely be um, taking this back and using it. Go ahead. Make your case. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. Well, you know, Lacey, when, um, when you hand it to me, I mean, I was just like, uh, I, you know, coming from a history of um, people pressing worksheets kinds of stuff, um, you know, into my classroom, I immediately have resistance to it, and, and I, I really own that. I got to thinking about, like, how do I go about figuring out how to um, do response? Um, I've never, as a writer or person responding in various places, I've never used a structure like this. Mm -hmm. I first, I read, how do other people here respond? So I go and I read and I find out, like, oh, what's happening here? What's, what's the way that I could do this? And, I mean, that's the way I go about writing. So it's not that I'm avoidant of structure, but it, rather than coming at it from a, here is the structure, you know, I figure out, Oh, like what are what's happening here? What are what are the ways that people do it, and um, and then I can try to enter that conversation. So to enter that to enter that dialogue, um, the, the, there are over fifty guides on the site now, <laughs> and the way the guides are created is by a student does something wonderful, and we pull the content out, right? Mm -hmm. So the guides are are kind of organically built. Yes. On the other hand, this particular guide, the commenting guide, is right out of Peter Elbow. Okay. The, the, two, the two paragraphs where you're pointing <laughs> come out of his pointing suggestions to point when you're in a small group and global response at the beginning and be nice at the end. I don't know. You know yeah. They're encouraging dialogue in some way. Okay. There, and, and if you look at Gerald Graff's work around um, sentence, you know, giving people work, um, these kinds of structures, that's where it's coming from as well, a little bit. But, but we, kn we know there, it, there are issues around it. I can also say that in, in my, like, when I'm, I work as, as fast as possible in an asynchronous way so the kids are doing all sorts of things all over the place. So when a kid is over there and they need to do this kind of response, I don't have to sit down and, and teach it. I can say, okay, follow this for now. If it really drives you crazy, that's okay. Let go of the third paragraph. We don't care. But, yeah, so, yeah. in I, practice, yeah. I was thinking, too, like, the context really matters. It matters a lot to me that this, that you gave me this call, uh -huh. because then I felt really free to say, well, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> you know, rather than this coming down from the, <laughs> you know, I'm gonna the, think the, about the, that a lot. the teacher's <laughs> manual or something. Yes. The relationship matters. Yep. And we encourage you to put one up yourself. Yeah, right, so, but, yeah. I really like this format, and I'm not really um, big on formulaic writing, but what I do think this is effective for is meeting students where they are and helping them advance um, grammatically, language-wise. There's enough freedom for them to be able to say um, what they want to say with some um, guidance from this, this format for them to be better writers, and I think that that's really an important tool for them to be able to use to find expression um, digitally. So I appreciate cool. this very much. We're, we're over time. Sorry. <laughs> um, thank you all. But um, we should, uh, here's, if you don't mind, some last words from you guys out in California. Um, Young Wong. Yeah, I just want Thank you. I wanted to jump in with a final comment, which is um, to think about how all of this relates back to the question I led with, which is voice plus action, or sorry, voice plus audience equaling action. And I know that we don't have time to hear responses, but just as something to think about as you're engaging with these students and for what it must mean for the students to hear back from you as an authentic audience for their ideas, is this actually civic engagement? Um, and if it is, you know, why? And if it isn't, why? But um, just to think about, you know, by encouraging students to, to have an authentic audience for their writing, uh, in this way, are we creating the conditions for civic engagement to happen? Um, is it civic engagement? Thank you. 
Wish we could spend more time with you, and we will. <laughs> so we, we do have a plan to do a, a couple of TTT shows, TTT from Teachers, which are is every Wednesday at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific, with um, you and some other teachers from the project. Is that right? That's right. And uh, Paul, O, and I were, were throwing around the date of January 22nd. And I know we haven't run that by you, Paul, but uh, if if we can tentatively say... <laughs> okay, we might be we might be uh, talking about this topic on January twenty second. Great, uh, we'd love to have everybody there join us again. Cool, Joe, thank you uh, for you and your students. Yeah, then thank you guys for you know you guys. I hope you understand that when you comment to them, and they comment back to you, this is a dialogue exchange that they never would have happened. And what I'm seeing in the room from this end is not the demographic that they are very that they that they see on a daily basis where we are. Um, so it is gonna. I'm gonna show them this footage and show them that people are out there that are listening that are very different from you. And when the comments that they read from you, they're gonna guides or not will reflect other people and who are different, and that's okay. And and they're gonna read that, but they're gonna see that the earnestness in the room is very genuine. And you got you all truly do care about you know the student voice aspect, and that's what that's the vibe I'm getting. They're gonna see that, and so this is amazing, and I appreciate the fact that you are responding to them and engaging with them in this way. Um, it, it will go really far for their research. Um, thank you. Thank you, Joe. Do you have anything you want to say, Paul? Uh, no, just uh, <laughs> thanks. Good to see you all. <laughs> and right. and um, I do want to say that this was, believe it or not, a special episode of uh, Teacher Seats and Teachers, which we've been doing now for eight years every Wednesday night. Um, and you can join us anytime you'd like at edtechtalk.com slash TTT, uh, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Am I on camera? I hope not. Um, 6 p.m. Pacific time. Um, thank you all. Uh, that, I always like to say at the end that that um, webcast was started at, with the EdTech Talk community, edtechtalk.com. Jeff Lebo and Dave Cormier started all that. Thank you all. This goes up online almost immediately on YouTube, um, and you can see it there. Um, and sue me later. No, sorry. Bye, Joe. Bye, everybody. Thank you, guys. Bye, guys. Thank you. Thank you.